Forest and fields awaken. A bull elk grazes by an alpine lake. An eagle soars through the morning mist over rainbows of Indian paintbrush. The hilltop lake spills over its rim and cascades down jink serpentine streams in the valley below. We can hear the mountains singing in every creature, ridge, and flower. They bring to us their jubilant songs of wilderness, wildlife, and wonder. We can hear the Rockies singing. The mountains sing forever. Robert C. Howard. Well, good morning from Jackson Hall one final time. It's about 6.30 in the morning. Kids are still asleep. I'm trying to wake up early so we can get an early drive. We're driving to Breckenridge today. Breckenridge wasn't really planning to be a destination stop for us. It was more uh, a stop just to cut down on the driving distance before we got to Estes which would have been about another three hours. So um, I want to say that we have to go about 500 miles today. Uh, still shorter by a long shot compared to our first day of driving, but long nonetheless. So trying to wake up early and get there as quickly as we can. Got all the slides already pulled in, just got to disconnect the electricity, cleaning out all the trash. Some people will complain that, you know, this is one of the things they don't like about a vacation is that when you're in an RV, you kind of have to do all this yourself whereas compared to room service. But you're in your right. But the difference is you're sleeping in your own bed if you own it uh, with a fridge that's stocked with the stuff that you kind of want. You're not walking through a hotel lobby every time to get in and out. So there's definitely a trade-off ready to get on the road. I'm kind of excited to see what Breckenridge is like. Um, we might have a, tra a family transition coming up in the near future, which would put us a little bit closer to Breckenridge, and this would be our family ski town, possibly. So ready to hit the road, ready to start uh, getting some miles behind us. Thanks for journeying with us today, guys. Here we go. Some days you just have this long, boring drive, but some days you're just given a gift and driving through these beautiful mountains. I don't know if you guys remember, when we started season two, one of the comments we made was how great it is to be traveling or to be doing things with people you know. And tonight we have a real treat. Uh, our friends, Abby and Kevin Krudegel, who we used to live by in Savannah, we helped them start a coffee shop. We actually have a coffee drink that is still named after us at this coffee shop in Pooler called Front Porch. If you're in Savannah or in Pooler or Rankin Guyton area, go check it out. It's called the Freeze and Chill. But they moved to Oregon, and because of all the forest fires, they're kind of retreating away for a little bit. Yeah, she said, I saw you guys are traveling. Are you by chance going to be in Colorado. I said, yeah, we're going to Breckenridge on Wednesday. She said, no way, seriously, we are too. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. 
yourself, fellas. Well, good morning from Breckenridge, Colorado. Yesterday was quite an eventful day. Yeah. Um, so we left Grand Teton, Jackson, Wyoming. Took us about uh, nine hours total to get down here. It wasn't, wasn't terrible, but we are really feeling the altitude difference here in Breckenridge. Uh, we've been about 6,000, 7,000 feet for the entire trip. We're at about 8,000 right now, so it's a little higher. But do you feel it? Oh yeah, definitely. We were trying to go on a walk yesterday and just talk was hard. Just talking was hard. Yeah, it's funny. And, and all the people we talked to right here say, yeah, it takes about you know, 24 or 48 hours, drink lots of water. What are your tips for overcoming altitude sickness? I, I don't think we have sickness by any stretch of the means. We're lethargic for sure. So when you're acclimating, what are some things that you guys do to uh, adjust well to different altitudes? We are at a beautiful RV park. This yes. is Tiger Run RV Park. Um, we have a little miniature river running right behind our, our campsite. Yeah. Um, we're right at the base of the mountain right here. Um, this is our views from our bedroom window. Yeah, it's pretty cool to open up your window <laughs> and see this on, on any given morning. Uh, town of Breckenridge, what do you think about it so far? Oh, it's so cute. We haven't got to explore it, but it looks just like the vibe of Jackson. Just yep. really quaint and small. So, we got some disturbing news yesterday. As you guys might have known in the last episode, Mom and Dad left Grand Teton the day before us. Well, on their way to Denver to return the RV that they rented and to fly home, Mom had an accident. Mom fell, she, she cracked three ribs, and she punctured along. Um, you know, I'm not sure if you remember, but she was the one, like, at the head of the trail leading the hikes every time. Uh, she is super tough. Mm -hmm. She's already had two surgeries this year, one on her back, one on her shoulder. So this is a big ordeal. Uh, they went to the ER in Cheyenne. She's okay, uh, but she's going to have to be there for a couple of days to heal. We, we were debating as we were driving down all day yesterday, do we need to go to Cheyenne, talk to Dad a whole lot. Thankfully, Dad was there the whole time. Sounds like Dad's been a real champ. Even in a bad situation, I think it's important to find things to be grateful for. And in this case, the way she fell, uh, she actually fell towards the front of the RV where the stairs are, where the, where the door is, as it was moving down the road. And if you've ever driven from Jackson, uh, outside of Jackson, you know those those roads are you know mountain passes. Uh, they turn a whole lot, lots of elevation change. Um, she could have gone through the door, and we're just so thankful that she's okay. Uh, we sent out a social media post earlier today, and a lot of people praying for her. So if, if you're watching and you're one of those people, I just want to say thank you from the bottom of our heart. Family is the most important thing uh, that we have here on this earth. Um, so thank you, God's grace to you, uh, for those who prayed for mom. So what are we doing today? <clears throat> we are headed to a trail with our friend Abby that we got to eat dinner with last night. Her family lives here in Breckenridge and this is one of her place, favorite places to visit, her and her family. All right, so on our way to Breckenridge to have some fun with Abby and her family. Uh, Kevin, wish you were here, buddy. Uh, Kevin stayed back to do, get some work done. Uh, he's actually works for like uh, a lung doctor in Oregon, so if you can imagine, this is really the time to be a lung doctor. You're gonna have a lot of needs out there with all the smoke they have going on. And then we're off to Estes Park uh, later on this evening. So Abby, where are you taking us today? Where are you taking us? see a troll. A troll? Awesome, have you been here before? Yeah? Is that a big troll? Nope. <laughs> the bear got into the bear opened my car door last night. So so tell the story one more time. That's that's too good not to not to share. I don't know. So my dad went out and he's like, Abby, you forgot to shut your door. I'm like, no, I didn't. And then we went and we looked and the neighbor's car door was open. 
then we looked and there was a paw print on my driver's seat. But I didn't, thankfully I cleaned the car out. Wow. There's no Car okay. doors. Yes. Here. So, um, <laughs> that is a picture of a bear with like a pick lock. <laughs> <laughs> that view outside our door. Daniel. Hi buddy, good morning. I want to go fishing. You want to go fishing? <laughs> well you have to get up and get dressed to go fishing. Come on guys. video of Breckenridge while we were there because we had limited hours of daylight and we'll be driving through several mountain passes, steep roads, and we did that in season one and quite frankly it wasn't very fun. It's very stressful. We pulled into our campsites late at night because we're driving extra slow just to be careful and we got to see the mountain drive this time which was totally worth it. Yes, we got to see sunset over the Rockies. It's yeah. beautiful. And the drive from Jackson to uh, Breckenridge was also really, really pretty. Something that's been kind of plaguing me the entire past two days is we drove through this little town called Saratoga. Uh, it's in Wyoming, not far from the border of uh, Colorado. And there is an airstrip there that boasted 10 private planes that will fly you anywhere in the continent of the United States. Now, if you were to happen upon an airstrip like this anywhere else in America, in a major city, no, it doesn't cause any alarm. But there was nothing around this whatsoever for, for hundreds of miles. And, and so we're just wondering, you know, one of those jets easily cost, I'm guessing, ballpark, 100 million, there's 10 of them, a billion dollar enterprise plus in the middle of nowhere. And so if anyone knows anything about this, I would love to hear from you. Uh, just because my brain's really curious. And who flies out of Saratoga? Have you ever flown out of Saratoga to anywhere else in the United States? And why did they put that business there? So help me out, fill me in. Uh, I would love to hear. So we've gotten a lot of questions centered around two things. One, what does your RV look like? Uh, because we're renting, people kind of wonder what the condition of the RV is. And uh, this is really birthed out of the second question, which is how do you rent an RV and plan your own family vacation? It's super easy. We're going to do a whole video on this because we received more questions about this one thing than anything yes. else. More questions. And I think I can understand where the question comes from. 
anything that's uh, kind of foreign, people are really familiar with like running hotels, sometimes possibly running Airbnbs, but they have no experience running a motorized vehicle that's designed to go up and down the road. How do you how do you plan your route? How do you do the rental process? What should you expect? What should you pack? Uh, how, do you site, how do you look for sites? All this, all these are great questions, and it's really easy. And once you do it one time, you get really, really comfortable with it. And so we're gonna do a whole video on both of those things, both what our RV looks like that we've been renting. We've been renting uh, an Ace uh, RV for the past two years, just because they're very convenient <laughs> for people that want to get in and out really, really quick. Uh, they don't have a lot of creature comforts, but decent storage. Uh, and then we're gonna do a whole video on the rental process. So stay tuned for that uh, coming up next week. We're excited to share that one with you. It'll be our first kind of um, how-to, if you will, video that we've ever done. And uh, we'll appreciate your feedback as well. Flag is at half mast today because uh, uh, Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg uh, passed away last night. So, in remembrance, all flags across the country put a half mast. Well, we are in Rocky Mountain National Park. We're, we're at the parking lot across from Great Glacier Basin, um, and we're heading to the Bear Lake Trail. Uh, that's Emerald Lake is. And There's a whole bunch of lakes, like a, a loop, like a whole bunch of lakes in there. 4.1 mile hikes, so it's not that bad. But there are there is some elevation change and you are at altitude, so keep that in mind, take lots of water, you'll be fine. Kids are pumped about this one. I'm gonna knock off a bucket list item that we had for the trip. Yeah, a couple of them. Maybe two, maybe more. We're gonna do a live painting on the trail too, by a lake. That's what we're planning on. Which sounds like fun. Okay. We're going to take the shuttle because Bear Lake parking lot at the trailhead of Bear Lake is full. And they have plenty of signs along the way to tell you that. So you can pull off in the parking ride across from Glacier Basin and take the shuttle. And I don't think they allow vehicles over 21 feet. So if you're planning on parking up there and you have a, you know, an RV or a pull behind, you're more than 21 feet, you're not going to be able to get in. So you'll want to park at the ride chair right across from Glacier Basin. Glacier Basin. Okay, so what you're looking at here is the end of Bear Lake Trail. We're on Emerald Lake. I don't know what our elevation is. I think it's around 8,500 uh, feet. So it's not an aggressive trail. It's really moderate. Yeah. Lots and lots and lots of steps. So it's yes. a steady incline, but so it's not that bad. I mean, there's three lakes to see along the way, and so you get to take those rests and stops. We forget the name of the first one, but everyone says it should be called Lilypad Lake because yes. there's 
thousands of lily pads across the lake. It's gorgeous. Then you go up to the next one, it's Dream Lake, and it's just as pretty as Emerald Lake. And yes. then you have Emerald Lake right here. You're not gonna believe what we saw on this trail. We ran into uh, a little group of elk, and they were massive. I'm not sure if the footage you're gonna be seeing here is gonna be able to do it justice, but easily, easily eight foot tall. Yes, they're and huge. In like they they were very very familiar with being around people it seemed like because yeah. they, they were crossing the trail it was probably you know 15 to, to 30 people coming through at that time yeah it's almost like they waited for us to go across and then they crossed they knew the language of the trail <laughs> yes they, they knew it was our turn and they knew it was their turn yes and well speaking of wildlife also chipmunks watch out for your snacks like as soon as you pull out a snack bar or sandwich whatever you brought they're right on yeah. you. They were climbing up my back. I didn't even know it. Yes. Um, little travel companions wanting to, to hitchhike their way up to uh, Emerald Lake. They Along with birds. I saw birds swoop at people's heads over there. Yeah. Yeah. Becca, but what you doing? you have to do this trail if coming to Rocky Mountain National Park. It is heavily trafficked, but it's so doable and everyone's super happy to be here. <laughs> Along with the chipmunks. <laughs> this one's Alvin. Oh, oh my goodness. goodness. <laughs> We're headed into Emerald Lake for a dip. Okay, it's it's September uh, 18th, and that water is probably a few degrees above freezing, is my guess. So go for it, guys. We're, we're happy to watch. Wait, we're not going to jump. We're going to just wait out in there, okay? One, two, three. <laughs> Hey Jess, is that is that cold? Yes. There was okay. a point where I thought that I could switch back. I could move. It's just so oh. distant. Last day on the trip. Saturdays are uh, last days of the trip are always a little bit sad because we really don't want to come back home. We're enjoying ourselves so much, but it, it also gives us the ability to appreciate what we're doing uh, all the more and gives us something to look forward to for our, our next trip. And even though this is going to be the last um, episode of the trip, we still have one more trip planned um, for November. We're going to be going to Savannah, Georgia. And by the time all this footage is edited and up online, uh, this will be a part of season two still, uh, the Savannah trip. So we look forward to sharing that with you too. Um, there was something that happened yesterday that we did not share with you because we were so disgusted in the moment that if we did, we were probably going to puke inside the driver's seats. This, this happened literally after I told you guys that we don't need to do any videos or lessons on connecting, disconnecting. Well, we went to disconnect, and there's no um, dump station here on our site. We have to go to the front of the, yeah. the park. To so dump. it's only water and electric hookup. Yeah. Now, there are uh, full hookups at this site, just our site, for whatever reason. Uh, it's just not one of those sites. So we were driving out yesterday to uh, to drop all of our gray tanks and our black tanks. That's your sewage, your gray water, and all that stuff. Well, dumped it all. Everything's fine. And uh, we disconnected the hose. There's a very, very large weighted stop 
like a cap on top of the uh, the the sewage line. And as I was pulling our line out of it, the the hatch dropped and hit some of the spillage and splashed up a good six seven feet right up in my face, up in my hair, <laughs> and um, yeah. It wasn't so funny in the moment. <laughs> Thank God my eyes were closed. I saw it coming. It's like you had that brace moment. Like, <laughs> but then the smell hit you. So you stiff your lips out more? No, I'm pulling, <laughs> I'm pulling my lips in. This is like, <laughs> this is protect. And it, it was just, it was just gross. If you ever watched that movie uh, Four Christmases with Vince Vaughn, when he has that reaction <laughs> to babies vomiting. Disgusting. <laughs> I kept you around. Okay. Daniel, get him some water. <coughs> oh God. Yeah. Dan, yeah. Dan was gagging over and over. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. And every time I breathed in, it just. <laughs> bleh, bleh. <laughs> and then, and then you look at your, you see like the drip from your hair. Oh no. Oh no. So we we detoured to the bathroom again. Took a, another shower. <laughs> And uh, <laughs> I'll be buying a hazmat suit for the rest of our house. <laughs> got COVID going on right now. Why not invest in a hazmat suit, right? <laughs> so be careful. That is some disgusting stuff. Now, there could be some real lessons uh, in disconnecting. <laughs> uh, but we're like I said, we're going to save those for you until we have our own rig. Uh, some things we've learned ourselves, some things other people have learned, and just some good sanitary tips to yeah. keep you and your family safe because... You get your gray tanks, your, your freshwater tanks, your sewage tanks, anything comes into contact from any one of those tanks, cross contamination, it, it can be a real it can be a real danger for you. So you wanna you wanna know what you're doing in, in those cases. What are we thinking about doing today? Um, we are thinking about going back into the park. Like I said, we have to have a reservation. So our reservation again is at noon. So we're gonna load up everything in the next uh, you know, thirty minutes or so, then head out, go see Estes. Go back into Rocky Mountain National Park. Do you have a trail picked out that we're going to go on? Uh... Um, not quite yet. I've got some to show Dan and see which one he wants to take. I offered a 10-mile hike today, and he said, heck no. It wasn't just a 10-mile <laughs> hike. It was like a four, 5,000 elevation change, too. It's like the top of a mountain. It was mountain. to the top of a peak. I mean, who doesn't want to do that? <clears throat> with a with a five-year-old. <laughs> so, I'm hey, all he's game. He's tough. He's amazing. I'm game, but the park does close at 730 uh, or at least the tram start running at 7.30, and um, yeah, that's seven and a half hours to get a five-year-old up and down a mountain. I'm just, I think we'll call next time on that one. <laughs>
and sometimes they used to be brown, but now they're yellow. And the yellow and the white, um, it makes it makes it look like the leaves start glowing, and it's so pretty. When the sun hits them. Yeah. Super proud of this guy right here. He's already done five miles. He's only got one mile to go. We're just passing the waterfall that we saw when we came up here. Normally I get some, you know, tips from the girls, but tonight I thought it'd be really good. Dino, what would be some really good tips to share with your friends if they wanted to do this hike? You should be a water bug. <laughs> Real, a lot of what? A, a water bug. Two water Do bring lots of water. Dane already said two tips. He said bring lots of water, which I would agree with. Bring good snacks. You'll need the energy. And uh, three, I'd recommend bringing like a pullover or something or, uh, or a small down jacket. Just because the further you go up, the cooler it does get. And we had some strong winds blow through, carry a little bit of rain. And uh, the last thing you want to be doing is shivering as you come down the mountain. And hiking stick. Hiking stick? morning. So we've been up since about 4 a.m. We've already driven about just under 300 miles uh, from Estes Park into Springfield. We're on the border of Kansas right now. Uh, never really enjoyed the last day of the trip because it's when you're kind of preparing to go back into your other routines of life, which we're thankful for. But we just really miss uh, and cherish the time we're going to have with, uh, with each other. Uh, like we have over the past 10 days. So we're trying to pick up as we go down the road and pin it out, uh, pin up the RV so that we get to Springfield this is quickly unloading all of our stuff and then returning this bad boy to Chad Melantine. Now, if you're in Springfield and you really, really are interested in renting an RV, Chad is a great guy to rent from. Chad Melantine has a pace RV uh, and he makes a point that when he hands you the RV that he tries to make sure everything's in good working order. Uh, he kept it really, really clean, which honestly, out of all the RVs we've ever rented, this has been the most clean. So thanks, Chad. We appreciate it. And so would you if you rent from Rainy days and careless nights. Say you will don't Okay, we're gonna have three freezing chills without the coffee. Without the coffee. Yes. Throw your caution to the wind. Shelter of my